Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Vesuvan Duplomancy deck, which is the main build-around card in our deck for mana enchantment, saying whenever we cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature we control, create a token that's a copy of that artifact or creature, except it's not legendary. So Duplomancy rewards us for targeting our various creatures with cheap pump spells, and the best one is probably Timely Interference, just because it also draws a card. It's typically meant to target opposing creatures, but we can also target our own creature with it, shrinking it by one power until end of turn, and drawing a card at instant speed. So now we can not only draw a card, but also copy our creature if we have a duplimancy in play. And then in the same vein, we also have four copies of Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief, two mana, two one, a legendary flyer, saying whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, we may copy that spell and the copy targets Ivy. So this can occasionally also steal an aura or a pump spell from the opponent, but for the most part we're enabling Ivy ourselves. And once again, if we have timely interference, target a different creature other than Ivy, then now we get to draw two cards for one mana at instant speed, which is a pretty good deal. And then ideally we also have a duplomancy to copy our creature, and that's how we pull ahead. So which creatures are we looking to copy with a Duplomancy? Of course we want some sweet enters the battlefield abilities, and Aether Channeler kind of does it all. A 2-1, and when it enters, Aether makes a 1-1 Flying Bird token, can bounce an opposing a non-land permanent, or gets to draw a card. So in the early turns we're often going to draw cards, but if we need a bit of interaction, this can also bounce opposing permanents back. And then especially if we control multiple copies of Duplomancy, we can quickly take control of the game. So that's our main game plan. Then we also have four copies of Jewel Thief, 3-3 three, three Vigilance Trample, when it enters makes a treasure token, so that makes it easier to potentially play Jewel Thief and a pump spell in the same turn to either protect it or to copy with Duplomancy. can also help us ramp into Duplomancy and still have a mana left over to get immediate effect from the Duplomancy, since that's often the problem when you're playing these four mana enchantments that don't have an immediate impact on the board, is that you're going to fall behind. But if you have a bit of acceleration, then now we can play or four mana enchantment and get immediate advantage from it in the same turn. And then Topiary Stomper, similar to the Jewel Thief, will also ramp us when it enters the battlefield. Instead of a treasure that's untapped, it will grab a tapped land. And then as soon as we have seven or more lands in play, the Stomper can also attack and block as a 4-4 Vigilant. So it does take a while for it to get going, but if we can copy Stomper, it is pretty good in multiples, because additional copies will make it easier to get to seven lands, and then the 4-4 can also take over the game very quickly. And then taking a look at some spells to target our various creatures, we also have two copies of Careful Cultivation as an aura that we can also potentially copy with Ivy, so there's a bit of synergy there, and it can also enable Vesuvan Duplomancy if we cast it as a 3-mana enchantment, but can also be channeled for 1 on a green, making a 1-1 one -one Monk token that can tap for green, so that can also help us ramp. Then we have a few protection spells with four copies of Shore Up, can give plus one plus one hexproof and untap our creature, and then two copies of Slip Out to Back, which will phase out our creature and put a plus one counter on it, so all great ways to just enable Duplomancy or Ivy. Then two copies of Combat Research as another aura, especially nice if we can target a different creature and then put a copy on Ivy to start drawing extra cards, but also just a one mana way to enable the Duplomancy. And then we already mentioned Interference. Then two copies of Croaking Counterparts, which is also very fun. Gets to create a token that's a copy of target non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 green frog. So it still works very nicely with any Enter the Battlefield abilities, like the ones on Channeler. But even Thief and Stomper are pretty good to copy. And then we can also flash it back out of the graveyard for 5 mana. Now we can also potentially copy Ivy, not with a counterpart, because then it's still a legendary token and we can only have one in play at the same time. But if we copy Ivy with a Duplomancy first, then we get to make a non-legendary Ivy, and then we can potentially copy that one with a counterpart, and then potentially go crazy with targeting all our creatures with uh, various pump spells, which will all get copied by Ivy once again. So that can also come up. And then finally, two copies of a Luxurious Libation, which can be a nice finisher, giving target creature plus X plus X until end of turn, and also makes a 1-1 citizen token in the process. So we can cast this for x equals zero just to get certain benefits like from Ivy and Duplomancy, and we get to make several 1-1s potentially in the process. 
And then in the late game, of course, we can sink all our mana into it, especially nice with a trampling jewel thief or a flying ivy, especially if we also get to copy it with ivy and get uh, double damage out of it. And then our mana base, pretty simple, just four of each dual land, and then plenty of basics to search with Stomper, and then Soaring City and Boseju give us a tiny bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our fun, casual Vesuvan Duplomancy deck. Let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Missing Ivy or Duplomancy. Ivy especially would be nice with a combat research. And then Chandler could make a bird that we can then also target up against the green aggro with turn one pack leader, turn two pack leader. Uh oh. Alright, there's Ivy, right on cue. And then, yeah, I don't hate Channeler, make a bird. Beast Caller as well. So your opponent means business. Could, of course, Channeler bounce Beast Caller. But uh, Channeler's unlikely to connect with Ivy. So, let's give this a try. And then Channeler, I'm happy to trade off. Opponent might also be holding a protection spell, like time your safekeeping for all we know. Oddity is not what we wanted to see, worst case scenario pretty much. Hasty 4-4 that pumps all three creatures. So we'll trade for pack leader and then take 10. And uh, yeah, I can research, draw a couple cards, but... Uh, we're a bit too far behind, I'm afraid. There's a Duplomancy, a little late to the party. Okay, Jewel Thief means I can play it and shore up to untap IV and then maybe set up an extra blocker. Bone moves to combats, so I need to shore up now. And then Ivy would still trade, but so be it. So I can block, let's say, the Oddity and then trade for Beast Caller. Opponent had the safekeeping, although Ivy gets to copy it as well. So that worked out. And then now can we do something powerful? I guess Channeler can maybe bounce Beast Caller. Or can make a bird token, wondering if both can attack or if I should play it safe and only attack with one. Yeah, I guess uh, it is a little risky if we attack with both, but maybe we'll find a one mana instance to use Duplomancy, although also don't have anything exciting to copy necessarily. So I think we just attack with one creature, probably make it the bird. And then Channeler bouncing Beast Caller. And then I'm happy to trade Channeler for Pack Leader, even though it could still provide some value. Opponent replays Beast Caller. And a Kodama now as well for Trample. Can also block my bird. Think I still keep Ivy alive here. And then take two trample down to one. Opponent finds a land. And a croaking counterpart. Can stomper and then copy it with counterparts. And then we'll have at least a 4-4 four -four blocker. Or I could wait until I play Duplomancy. Now we'll make an extra blocker now. And then we'll keep the original Ivy. And then pass. Which 
just a land for the opponent, and then now Duplomancy plus Lip Out the Back is gonna be awesome. So attack with Stomper. And then Ivy as well, potentially. Sure. Opponent takes it, we get to draw. And then now I can Duplomancy twice. Okay, that should be pretty decent. Part of me wants to slip out the back Ivy first, so we get to make two non-legendary copies and then go off with a counterpart. Yeah, let's go for it. So two non-legendary Ivies and then now counterpart. And our opponent explodes. So the copies from counterpart that copy the non-legendary IV would make a 1-1 non-legendary IV that stays in play. So we would end up with five IVs and then any additional pump spell we find is going to be completely crazy. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and has potential with cultivation ramping out our four mana enchantment. Just missing a creature to copy. Turn one, Fang. Reinforcements can maybe shrink it down so the Death Touch doesn't really have an impact. Turn two, Visitor. So our opponent's playing some enchantments. Another Fang. Alright, so now if they pump the other Fang, interference would not be quite as effective. Pumps Visitor instead. We'll make a 1 1. And uh, alright, so well, plan is simple here. Play a couple of these and then hopefully find a more exciting creature to copy. Bind down kills my 1-1, one -one, so now we're unable to cast another one. And Azusa's has many journeys. Okay, Stomper's perfect, so we'll play that. Getting probably a forest. And we'll see how long we can hold off copying the Stomper, try and get as many of these in play as possible. Opponent communes to find another enchantment, taking five per turn now, so we can still take a hit. Croaking counterparts also tempting. Yeah, that's got to be worth it. And the more stompers we get, the faster we enable them as well. Okay, so one land away from stomper being able to attack and block. And should be able to go for it next turn. Another many journeys, so a last big attack from the enchantments. And in fact, we could interference copy my Stomper right now just to make another one and be able to block. Although blocking Fang would just be a trade, of course. Yeah, maybe that's still acceptable. So shrink down doesn't really matter. The real one, I guess. Make a copy. Opponent's got a prize fight, so that will still be a trade, and we still get our copy from our diplomacy, so not too bad, all things considered. And our opponent packs it in, awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, hand seems fine. Turn to IV, if it gets dealt with we have a backup, so it's no big deal. Turn 3 Jewel Thief, and then hopefully pick up more pump spells. Put on blue-black. Channeler's good too. And put on a ninja deck it seems. Okay, play Ivy. 
not really interested in trading for the Master, but we'll see if they even offer. Or if they just have a removal spell. Opponent can ninjutsu at a discount now. So maybe all the more reason to block. It's gonna be a silencer, just uh, as a two drop. Opponent passes. Okay, so I can play Jewel Thief perhaps, since I'm not really interested in uh, bouncing anything with Channeler. And then the treasure will keep up shore up as well. And I think I still hang back with Ivy as opposed to attacking, even though I guess shore up Doss on tap. So could have maybe set up an ambush. Right, it's going to be a specialist for four mana to bounce. So let's uh, keep those in play. Another Ivy, so we definitely want to trade off the one in play now. And then Channeler can draw. Finds another Jewel Thief. Do I want to attack? I guess so. Trade for Silencer, maybe. Okay, so we're just playing a bunch of creatures here, waiting for a Pump Spell or a Duplomancy. Although then we'll also still need a Pump Spell. Umezawa, okay, that's scary. So now they could find extra cards if they ninjutsu. Do we want to bounce it? I'm still more into the idea of drawing with the Channeler. And then could also play a Jewel Thief first. It's probably fine. Just to add more to the board. Make it harder for the opponent to ninjutsu. Find another Jewel Thief. Should I just start attacking for two in the air? I'll play it safe for one more turn. Maybe our opponent feels inclined to kill Ivy. Maybe our opponent feels inclined to kill Ivy. Okay, that's an all-out attack. Nope, not quite. So... Ivy trade for Silencer. Trade for Specialist. Double block Umezawa. They might have spot removal for Jewel Thief, but don't want a triple block. And now at least they won't be able to ninjutsu anything. Okay, trade happens. So that worked out. And now a Thousand Faced Shadow and a Kaito to draw. So now we need to pressure Kaito. Ivy can block Shadow, but won't be able to stop the ninja from using ninjutsu. So, yeah, play Jewel Thief, play Ivy. Probably fine to take a damage and keep extra mana. And then Kaito, we won't be able to attack right now. Does that mean I should attack with a Channeler? Probably. Maybe even both. A long reach of night. Can discard Ivy, I suppose. And I'm fine with the trade. Now this. Surprised they didn't attack with a ninja, maybe keeping it back to protect Kaito. Aha, there we go. Libation. That's what we needed. So can I go for the kill here? Yeah, if I attack all at our opponents, we get to pump for 6 times 2 if they don't block Ivy. That might be good enough. They're not really incentivized to block Ivy. So X equals 6. Targeting doesn't matter, as long as it's not Ivy herself. Copy. And there we go. 
Definitely our best top deck in that spot. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems to be missing a few too many key elements. So we'll mulligan. Okay, this I can try, missing a creature. But uh, at least we've got our enchantments, and then probably bottom of the libation, since at least interference can draw to hit our land drops and find some creatures, and then shore up will be a way to protect our creature once we find it. Turn one delver always scary. Alright, Jewel Thief, so now the age-old question. Do we keep interference in hand, or do we fire it off to make sure we find our third land for Jewel Thief? And I probably have to play one out here. Opponents bypassing their delver. Okay. So we can interference, which will also stop the uh, bypass from triggering, so that's nice. Found a land. And another one, so uh, next turn I can play the enchantments and copy Jewel Thief. Although using interference on the Delver could still potentially be better. Especially if it doesn't transform. Alright, opponent is blue-white, so probably a Virtuoso deck. And now Homestead Courage, so no point in going for the interference anymore. So hoping to find a channeler at some point to bounce the Delver. This card's another Homestead Courage. Okay, let's attack for three, maybe play this first. In case our opponent tries something funny, I could uh, shore up the Thief and copy it. And then I think the plan is Interference, my own Jewel Thief, to draw and make a copy. But we can wait and see what our opponent does. Opponent must have drawn some uh, creatures or lands in the meantime since they haven't transformed Delver. And since they haven't played any other creatures, I'm gonna go with they drew a bunch of lands. Delver 5-5. Five, five. Wouldn't be able to block it, so yeah, need to find answers soon. Opponent connives. And discards a Drake. So they're hanging on to two mana, so they probably have some protection spells in hand as well. Could untap first to play around a bounce spell on Jewel Thief, but doesn't seem to be the case. And do I shore up just to make another Jewel Thief here? I think we wait. And then I can go Jewel Thief plus Stomper, although then I'll be shields down on shore up. Could also Cultivation to copy a Thief. Still can't attack past Delver. So maybe Stomper is the... Uh, the best solution here, and then we can try and copy the Stomper a bunch next turn. So no good attacks. And hoping to find a Channeler soon. To bounce the now Insectal Aberration, which can kill us in two attacks, so... It's not looking great. Cultivation can give our creatures reach, but of course a bypass is still a problem. Opponent revealed a slip out the back, so they probably have multiple ways to protect the uh, aberration now. Virtuoso joins the fun. And I should probably copy Stomper now, so it has a chance to attack. Another Duplomancy, if I play this Ants Cultivation, I get two copies. It's not going to be enough for lethal, but I guess we'll go out on a high note here. Opponent could also slip out the back Stomper, but we'll still get the copies. Alright, so Jurassic Park over here. Can attack with all. 
Still not quite lethal. And then next turn, Aberration should get there. If we drew Channeler on this last turn, maybe if I kept the Shore up to target at instant speed, we might have been able to beat the Aberration even through one slip out to back. Opponent can slip out the Virtuoso instead. Take 10, and then uh, as long as they only attack with Aberration, we die. Alright, they got us. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's got all the cards we need. I guess missing a uh, 3-mana creature to copy with the Duplomancy. Although we can always copy Ivy, since it makes a non-legendary token. And then multiple Ivies in play can also get out of hand. But uh, still wouldn't mind an extra creature. There we go. So now we really have everything. Question is, do I play Ivy turn 2, or do we try and protect it with Shore Up? I think I run it out here. If it dies, so be it. Still have Channeler to go off with uh, Duplomancy. Opponent's got to plummet, of all things. Okay. The things you see in the play queue. Okay, we get to untap, play Channeler to draw, hopefully hit our land drop. And then double Duplomancy is going to be pretty sweet. Although I wouldn't be surprised if her opponent's got a Naturalize to destroy it. Four mana. Okay, I guess um, I can either Cultivation, Channel it, or uh, play another Channeler to draw. And hopefully find a land. I think I'm going with Cultivation have plenty of ways to target my creatures once we have the Duplomancy in play, so not too worried about needing this as an aura. I'm gonna try and wait on uh, Interference since it can provide so much value with a Duplomancy in play. And then still hoping for an untapped land so we can double spell next turn. Stomper... I guess I'll take. So play Stomper can keep up our protection. And then next turn double spell. We'll go get an island. Attack for two. I guess another fun trick we can potentially pull off is shore up to untap my monk so it can make one mana once again. So it kind of pays for itself in a way. Okay, but it's got the 4-4 Resurrector. That's fine. We'll be able to bounce it pretty easily. So for now, Duplomancy. And I think just Interference, my own Channeler, to bounce the Resurrector. Seems okay. Could also copy the Stomper. But uh, we'll try this. And hit for one. Opponent just stuck replaying their 4 drop. And now we get to pull ahead. Play another one. And then maybe make the play I mentioned of copying the monk. Although it's not that impactful. Let's just copy another channeler. One can draw, one can bounce. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand. Turn two cultivation sets up turn three. Duplomancy. Opponent on a wolf deck. Could also just play a Jeweled Thief on turn 3, and then play our enchantment on the following turn. And then we're hoping to pick up more ways to enchant our Jeweled Thief, which I guess is a reason to hang on to Cultivation. 
So we have an extra way to copy it. Although, is the extra mana tempting? Yeah, maybe I should keep the cultivation in hand. And then now shore up, also a way to protect our thief. Or potentially target it next turn. Opponent with an Augur of Autumn in the meantime. That could definitely get out of hand. Could have been a reason to try and ambush the wolf to deny the potential coven enabler. Alright, wolf can hit us for three. I accept. And thanks to the jewel thief making treasure, we could copy it twice next turn, although now I'm more tempted to wait until we can play our second copy. And Vigilance means we get to attack. Okay, everything's in place to have some very exciting turns coming up. And shore up will ensure that we uh, don't lose our valuable creature. Put on gets to untap. Five mana, and another wolf is acceptable. So if they activate one, they would have Coven for Augur. Although then they might have been better off not playing a land yet. So I could block with a Jewel Thief and go for Shore Up, but I'm happy enough taking another three damage. Okay, another Shore Up's good. So we'll play this using Coast, leaving a blue. And then now attack. And with double shore up, there's no real way this can go wrong. And I think we just pass, even though I could combo off right now. And maybe even play cultivation thanks to the extra treasure tokens. We'll try and set up an ambush instead. And then maybe keep the libation in hand. So I should maybe shore up before blocker so I can block with an extra jewel thief. Block, block. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. IV into Channeler. Interference to draw a few cards. Opponent on a blue deck. And they turn one consider. Let's try Ivy. And then turn three. Could also go for Stomper to develop our mana somewhat before we uh, eventually play Channeler to draw. So our opponent appears mono blue. Always a scary matchup. Can expect plenty of counter spells as well. Stomper, not the most threatening card right now, but they might still counter it to spend their mana. That resolves. Get an island here, I think. Not that it matters too much. And a thirst for discovery. So next turn we might see Haughty Jin leave a mana for counterspell, or maybe even a Tolarian Terror. It's gonna be Haughty Jin. Okay. So, can go for Channeler to bounce it, or to draw, and then I'll still be able to Interference twice with Ivy to draw a bunch of cards. If we bounce the Djinn, we don't need to worry about any counter spells. Okay, and then we'll attack for two. 
And then... I probably want Interference now. Just to draw cards while the opponent's tapped out. Target Channeler. And then we'll get to draw two with IV triggers. Guess our opponent could have a Fading Hope. Spell Pierce is another option, I guess. Okay, and then do I Interference again? I guess I could wait on the off chance that uh, we draw Duplomancy next turn. Although I might still end up going for it end of turn here, since our hand's not that exciting at the moment. I guess there is a play we can make involving Jewel Thief making a treasure so we can kick the Interference. Even though that's unlikely to work since Stomper won't be able to attack with uh, 6 lands in play, so that would have to wait an entire turn cycle. I guess we'll take our draw step and see what's up. Poseju doesn't really help. So, can play Jewel Thief and that's it. And then maybe next turn we can kick Interference on Hot Egen, although it's likely going to be attacking here. Alright, so our opponent gets to untap with a lot of mana, a lot of cards in hand, and a discount from Hot Egen, so... We'll see what happens. Tolarian Terror now as well, leaving two islands untapped. And does the Djinn attack? It does not. Okay, Soaring City is also interesting. So I could make the play of Interference kicked on Hardy Djinn and then just attack with Stomper to kind of force a trade. Unlikely to work, but it's worth a shot. Or I could just Interference my own creature to draw two. Which is a more fun play, one could argue. And then Soaring City can always bounce the Hardy Djinn as well. I guess we'll start here. Croaking Counterpart, now we're talking. So let's Counterpart the Channeler to draw, I think, still. Copying with Ivy here doesn't do much since it's going to make a legendary token. And then we'll draw. Find a Jewel Thief, which we can play. Sure. Well, it lets it slide. Okay. Counterpart would have been more exciting with a uh, Duplomancy in play. I'm fine to trade Ivy for Aberration, since we have a backup. And Ivy's not doing much with a counterpart, so... Trade happens. Opponent passes, and there's the Duplomancy. A little bit late to the party, but I'll still take it. So see if that maybe gets negated. Can probably pay for Syncopate here. So we'll start here. That resolves, okay. So, counterparts, even if it gets countered, would still trigger the Duplomancy. Although now we could also take a different approach, where we Soaring City bounce Terror and then just attack. And if I play Ivy first, we get a discount on Soaring City. Alright, if the Essence scatter, then I wouldn't be able to pay for Ward. I guess I wouldn't have been able either way. That's fine. We'll uh, just pass and then could always decide to bounce Hardy Jin. And then counterpart copying Ether Channeler can bounce Terror as well. Another Delver. 
are the Jin attacks. Not opposed to the idea of bouncing with Soaring City. Although, could see the advantage of counterpart first, and then maybe Soaring City at instant speed. Cultivation gets to trigger Duplomancy. Alright, so let's start there. Don't need Buseju. That resolves. Do we want to bounce Tolarian Terror now? I think so. Pay for ward. And that resolves. And then now we could Croaking Counterpart as well if we'd like. Sure. Targeting probably the real channeler, so if they bounce it, I still get it back to hand. Alright, opponent's gonna spell pierce, can actually pay for it thanks to channeler making mana. And make disappear, fair enough. Still get the token. And do we bounce Jin? Do we draw? Bouncing Jin's the safer play. Although they have the slip out the back to save it. Maybe making a bird's actually the safest play. So we can chump the Jin. And then attack with all. And then we still have our Soaring City. Surprised they didn't use uh, Slip Out the Back to protect the Tolarian Terror. Maybe keeping it for the Djinn, I guess. We're gonna fire it off now just to put a counter on it. That's acceptable. So yeah, some of these conditional counter spells do get a lot worse as the game progresses. And we'll play it safe and chump here. Still looks like we have lethal, and especially now with a slip out the back, can bounce terror and pay for ward. And then slip out the back with duplomancy, can also bounce something, and there we have it. Alright, sweet. Beating mono blue. So, got to see our blue green duplomancy deck in action. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend crafting it if you're looking for a deck that can reliably win games of Magic. So there's not many circumstances where you would end up crafting this unless you happen to just have lots of the rares and mythics in the deck already and just want to see how it plays out. So yeah, a fun deck, but again, not very competitive. Definitely wouldn't recommend it for the ranked ladder. And even for your daily wins, there's probably more efficient options available, but still a fun deck just to showcase it here in today's video. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.